four continues on CBS with game two in the national semifinals. It's an all orange scene right now. Here's the Syracuse Orangemen take on the Burn Orange Texas Longhorns. Syracuse out of the east, Texas out of the south bracket, the winner to face Kansas on Monday night for the national championship here in New Orleans. Welcome back, friends. Billy at Syracuse. It's Texas. What's your first thought on this matchup? You know, the first thing I think of is how they got here. They both had favorable home crowds to get to the Final Four. That won't be the case today, but a tremendous contrast we're going to see in this game. A zone defense against a team that can penetrate and kick out. Here's a closer inspection of the Orangemen of Syracuse. Well, we're talking about the Big East freshman of the year, a second team All-American. Totally rounded basketball player, Carmelo Anthony, the best freshman in the country. Now inside, when you look at this team from Syracuse, they have a couple of other options too, including Warwick. Warwick with the good inside passing. We see Anthony breaking inside. The Syracuse team is long and tall. And talking about long, look at Dwayne's wingspan on this block. Why Syracuse is so tough in that zone defense. They have some tall and players with long wingspans. Well, the Longhorns navigated the road to the Final Four with a Ford. T.J. Ford. Well, the National Player of the Year is chosen by many. T.J. Ford has the ability to penetrate against any kind of defense. It's really going to be interesting to watch him today. And in Thomas, we have Texas, a young man that actually, Jim, surprised me in how big he really is. But he's played big all year long in the boards. And Boddicker probably resembles what you want to see from a team that can come off the bench with great three-point shooting. Well, the Syracuse wanted 2-3 zone, though. Well, one of the things that they do so well in the 2-3 zone is that they will push and bump the wingmen back down inside so they get total coverage. Here they do it. The ball comes over on a swing. And watch how they bump the, the wingmen down and then double team in the corner. Not only double team, but create a turnover that leads to a fast break opportunity. This is a very solid 2-3 zone defense. Syracuse was last in the Final Four back in 96. The Longhorns' first appearance in over a half century. We'll be right back. Back here at the Louisiana Superdome, Armand Katayan and Bonnie Bernstein with us as well. Bonnie, to you first. Hi, Jim. Jim Beheim told me he has not given his team a history lesson about that last second jumper. Indiana's keep smart hit in 87 to ruin Syracuse's title hopes. He said, I like history exactly where it is, in the past. Carmelo Anthony was only two years old at the time, so he didn't see it, but he has heard about what some call the 15-year ghost. He said, it's time to banish the ghost. I came here to make history, and it's time to give Coach Beheim that championship. Armin? Thanks, Bonnie. Now, throughout this entire tournament, Rick Barnes has gone out of his way to send a relaxed tone for his team. He said he did not want them playing scared in these big games, and if they did, if he sensed nervousness, they would be sitting on the bench next to him. Well, it was the same message again tonight in the locker room, Jim. Just moments ago, he said, relax and let the game come to you and enjoy the big moment. Jim. Well, we're looking forward to enjoying this one as well. Thank you, Harmon. We'll be right back. Syracuse and Texas will meet him in a moment. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinal. He's sponsored by Singular Wireless. Bud Light, Warner Brothers Terminated 3, and by Pontiac. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Louisiana Superdome for tonight's semifinal game between the Syracuse Orangemen and the Texas Longhorns. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Syracuse, a 6'8 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number one, Hakeem Warwick. At forward for Texas, a 6'8 freshman from Austin, Texas, number 22, Brad Buckman. At forward for Syracuse, a 6'8 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, number 15, Carmelo Anthony. At 
forward for Texas, a 6'8 junior from Schenectady, New York, number zero, James Thomas. At center for Syracuse, a seven-foot sophomore from East Greenbush, New York, number 51, Craig Forth. At guard for Texas, a 6'4 junior from Lafayette, Louisiana, number three, Brandon Mouton. At guard for Syracuse, a 6'2 freshman from Scranton, Pennsylvania, number three, Jerry McNamara. At guard for Texas, a 6'3 junior from Queens, New York, number 24, Royale Ivy. At guard for Syracuse, a 6'6 junior from Bloomington, Indiana, number 13, Brett Dwayne. At guard for Texas, a 5'10 sophomore from Houston, Texas, number 11, TJ Ford. And introducing the head coaches for Syracuse, Jim Beheim. And for Texas, Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes, amazing things in five years. Jim Beheim's third Final Four in three decades. Billy, what's the key here for this game? Well, Jim. When you take a look at these two teams, slick and quick, you've got to start with a National Player of the Year. T.J. Ford led the country in assists last year. He also can explode inside. When he goes inside on penetration, look for him to penetrate and kick out against the zone. The zone busters, Harris, Boddicker, Mouton. Texas has excellent perimeter shooters. And Rick Barnes has done a nice job bringing them off the bench against that Syracuse defense. It'll be important today. Ford control. Texas with... Four rebounds per game, rebounding advantage over Syracuse. Syracuse will really have to take care, particularly on the defensive glass. And the freshman sensation, Carmelo Anthony, second team All-American. He was the MVP of the East Region, 22 points a game. He's been something to watch. Texas, the only number one seed to make it to the Final Four. Its first ever designation is a one. Gets to wear the home whites. Syracuse is starting five, the same starting lineup all season long. That's a rarity. Well, Texas, one of three teams that stayed in the top ten all year long, so that's something that they can claim. Tipped out to four. As we get this one started, will it be an all Big 12 final Monday night? Or will Roy Williams and Jim Beheim battle for the first ever championship on both sides? But there's the zone, fourth in the middle with that wide wingspan, a seven footer, and that zone is really packed down inside. And they Good take hands. it away from Ivy right away. Great hands by Twainy. That zone was packed way in, Jim. Great hands with the shot. I watched more early this year. He's got incredible footwork. Ivy, three from the wing. Tipped around, Thomas. Oh, is he strong? The biggest set of shoulders in college basketball, and he knows how to go get it. Tying it up, the arrow goes to the Orangemen. Thomas, an upstate New York product. One of the great rebounders in college basketball. Here's Carmelo Anthony. Boy, Ivy's given up a lot of size on Anthony. Warwick with a second basket. Pretty good start for Warwick, huh? Talk about a young man that averages 15. Can put up some big numbers. People have speculated all week that T.J. Ford can break down this zone, but Texas struggling on its first three possessions. Jim, one of the things that Syracuse has done in this tournament, they have shut people down completely with this 2-3 zone. They're sixth in the nation in defensive field goal percentage, holding opponents to 38%. That foul down there was committed on Texas's James Thomas. Or by Thomas. Anthony Turnaround. 
this board, what he wants to do, push the ball up the floor, try to beat the zone down court, and they do. Move time with the three. One of the first weapons that you can ever teach against his own defense is beat it down floor. And Texas has got the component in DJ Ford to do just that. Push off call on Milton. And Syracuse, the East Regional Champions, their road to New Orleans, Manhattan, Oklahoma State down 17 in that second round game in the first half, then Auburn, and then Oklahoma decisively. Well, they've beaten three Big 12 teams this year, beating Missouri during the regular season. So they're trying to go for the Big 12 championships. Yeah. There is that footwork again of Warren, and at 6'9", he finds plenty of space. Mouton, a second three. And Mouton looks back at Warren, pumps his chest and says, get it to me. See a lot of different game than we saw in the first one, Jim, but just the intensity level is incredibly different. A freshman Buckman clears for the long Ooh, pass. Rifle pass. Mouton picks it up, and McNamara comes in for the board. McNamara showing his Syracuse will push. McNamara with the jumper. That's a two. McNamara and, and Anthony are the highest scoring freshman duo in the country. You see Thomas trying to set some screens. I really think T.J. Ford should be up at the top of the key. Try to penetrate down to the middle of that zone. He's out on the wings. He'll take the open shot. That's not his game. Thomas. And a foul going to be called here. Called on Warren. Texas. South champs, UNC, Asheville, Purdue, Connecticut. That was a thriller. And then the 85 on Michigan State, the most points any team scored on the Spartan position. Boddicker comes in for Thomas. We'll see Thomas back in there quickly. One man at 17 games with double figures and rebounding. Boddicker can, back, can bank bodies inside and also Step has a shoot. Great yep. touch. Yep. Rick Barnes has done an incredible job using this very deep bench of his. Mouton again. Mouton with all eight for Texas. When you've got a deep bench, in, as Rick Barnes has, you have to have confidence in using it. Anthony. Oh, beautiful move on Ivy, who's one of the best defensive players in the Big 12. Anthony just backed him back. And a foot on the line, that's a two. Anthony's got a smile on his face, Jim. The freshman with a lot of confidence. Yeah, that's not unusual. They've seen him this season do some things that put a smile on a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Boddicker lost control of it. Warwick tips it to fourth. There's those long arms of Warwick again. 6'9", plays closer to 7 foot. Wow, that is Boddicker in a takedown. That foul on Boddicker, and we're heading to the first break. Syracuse 10 8. Syracuse to inbound, leading 10 8. Kansas already advancing earlier today here in New Orleans. Then we've got a Syracuse team that's been to this Final Four. This is their fourth time now, and for Texas, their third. But for Texas, you have to go back way to 1947, the last time they were here, so quite a spell. The Mighty Mice of 47 and Slater Martin and company, and that's going against Syracuse. Team lost, that, that was a, a great basketball team. Only lost two games all year long. And Oklahoma knocked them out of that NCAA tournament on a one-point shot. Slater Martin, who played on so many great world championship teams, says he can remember that shot going in even to this day. McNamara after a foul call, comes right back with the steal, and over to Dwayne. Foul on Texas, on Ford. Team Warwick with a terrific start here for the Irishman. Great step and move there. Watched him a lot this year, and he has excellent footwork to get that offensive shot off. I thought early on watching him, Jim, I said, this guy's got to be walking to get that clear inside. But the more you watch him, the more you appreciate that footwork. A thousand point career score, Clint Dwayne with one more. You're talking about that last appearance by Texas in the final four. They lost on a midcourt shot. 
the last 10 seconds to Oklahoma and how times have changed. The final four, you played at the regional actual level back in those days, and they traveled by train all the way to New York just to play a third place game. Yeah, played CC in a lot. Mouton playing very positive so far. Good rebound by Anthony. Anthony pulled up jumper. There are not many freshmen capable of doing what you saw right there. A great rebound in the defensive glass. And then he was just so strong, he knocked Harris out of the way to get himself in position. Harris, Monaco comes flying through, and it's last touch by Texas. Surprised that Thomas is out of the game this early for this long. And you can see Rick Barnes wanting to go to that bench, but you're not going to wear down this Syracuse team. They don't go to their bench often, but because of the zone, they have pretty good stamina. Bob it over to Anthony. Doubled up, so they swing it around. It's McNamara with the three. <laughs> Talking about a freshman right here that was not that heralded. And there's Ford going in, but no place to go. Those long arms of that Syracuse zone, zone just blanketing him inside. Fox is coming in for Texas. You can go to CBS Sports Line for official NCAA Final Four merchandise. Click on shop at cbsportsline.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. This lead now, this early lead of eight, that's the biggest deficit for Texas in the tournament. They've been down only five to Purdue. That's the previous large deficit of this event. And a foul here on Syracuse. That's going to be on Duaney inside, but again, you saw two Syracuse players way up above the rim. Duaney called for that one. Mouton with a couple of threes and a basket in the lane as well. He wanted it early, Jim. Good looking shot. Hard to believe this man with the last name of Mouton not related. Not at all. He's the famous Mouton sports players from this particular area. Mouton now with all nine. He'll shoot one more. Syracuse brings in Edelin. What you see Jim Beheim doing right here. A man that's had incredible experience is saying, hey, if they're going to go ahead and try to push my bench and extend it and wear my guys down, I'll go to my bench early as well. So the only Cajun in the Final Four, the only Louisiana product, Mouton with all 10 for Texas, feeling right at home here at the start. On the line, it's Texas ball. Warwick felt he was pushed out of bounds there and felt contact by Boddicker later. But again, you saw terrific footwork on that young man's part. Again, so far, Jim, we have not seen Texas, as was the case with Oklahoma, come up with a game plan to attack the zone. Well, there they are trying to break it down with the penetration of Ford. And that's what Ford probably does better than any of the guards his size that we've seen. I, I really think that Ford, to me, is a combination of Tiny Archibald and Allen Iverson. Doesn't shoot as well as either one of them, but has that same explosive quickness to get on the inside and make a play. Won the Naismith Player of the Year Award and was given the honor on his 20th birthday. That whistle was on Warwick, so two on Warwick. And that means Warwick is coming out and makes Syracuse much smaller in that zone. Josh Pace will be coming in. Warwick to the bench with the two. Base came off the pine and scored 14 in the Sweet 16 game against Auburn. So he can give him a boost. 16-12 early, Syracuse. Ford playing off Edelin, who is going to have to take up some slack and get closer to try to power a little bit. Pace, nice. Oh, oh, oh. How about that there. coming off the bench with no Pace. sweat at all? Now the zone's much smaller. It's fourth out of the game. McNeil in the center. And work out. There's Bouton stuck underneath and Pace. And he touched it last. Pretty good block coming all the way from the weak side. Mouton's been exploded. It was amazing, Jim, that he didn't step out of bounds there. But there you see Pace coming over, doing a real nice job in that block. Mouton looks extremely quick in this game early on. Played well here two years ago when Texas played in the tournament. 
a first round loss though to uh, a team that liked to go with the zone. Oh, good time loses one. Playing against John Cheney's Temple team in that ball game, and nobody disguised the zone any better than Cheney. McNamara again. This one a trade again. Well, if you think this is strange, McNamara 25 points against Georgia Tech. He knows that that was a game early in the year. Showed what kind of score it could be. Ford way over the head of Harris. You think Harris thought somebody was behind him? I think he yeah, certainly did. Yeah. Didn't really go after him. Just And Beheim taking his alma mater to three final fours. Only one coach has ever bettered that guy, Lewis of Houston, took his alma mater. Houston, that is, of course. Five final fours. Outside Anthony. Edelin keeps it. Well, but Ford comes in with a quick hand. Now here's that explosive quickness. Mouton again for the Longhorns. Nobody in college basketball in quite some time has been able to do that. Make the steal and go 90 feet, leading to a perfect assist. That broke a four-minute spell without a basket. And something that Syracuse has done so well to teams all year. Look at Edlin taking T.J. Ford down inside. Pace comes right in, hits two. Two shots in the paint for Pace. Nobody in the center of that zone to catch a ball on a pass inside. Mouton, he has the feeling. You can see it. And there's another thing about Ford that's so good, Jim. He recognizes who is the man with the hot hit. He could have made a pass to any, any one of two players. On that occasion, he knows Mouton wants the ball. We're eight minutes into the game, and Mouton's already exceeded his season average of 14. 15 of the Horns points and a steal by Texas. Ball should have been caught by McNeil. It was a good pass. Harris, McNamara came over to pull it away. McNamara saying, I don't care who T.J. Ford is. I'm a pretty good point guard myself. Monitor gets it off the tip. Ford with a pull-up three. Yes. Don't see that often, Jim. T.J. Ford only shooting 25% from the outside. The three-point line this year. That was only his 18th three-point shot. So a three by Moton, a three by Ford, and Fox gets a hand in there on McNeil. You know, Ford has worked so hard on the weights, Jim. It gives him that incredible stamina. Listed at 5'10", he's probably every bit of that, but no bigger. But one of the stronger players on his team. He'll get to go to the foul line. In the Big East tournament, this young man set a, a tied, actually, a Big East tournament record with eight blocks against Connecticut. Jim, and we know what can, Connecticut can do offensively. A tough team to block shots against. And, and a team that'll block them right back absolutely, at you. Absolutely. Anika Okafor. So, Texas, a very deep squad. Brings Erskine into the lineup. Along the rest of the starters. And Ivy's back in there. And one man who has not returned and only played about, what did you say, four minutes was James Thomas. Picked up a couple of cheap fouls there early. Got one foul early. Yeah, Thomas on the bench with just one. We reached a timeout here, 11 minutes to go first half. And here's the singular wireless fan poll. What player has had the most outstanding tournament? Anthony, Collison, Ford, Heinrich, Wade for the entire tournament. Singular wireless users send vote to 171 or log on to cbsportsline.com slash singular. Stay tuned. Results coming up singular at the head. So Thomas for Texas remains out of the game, though. Now we have Erskine now playing on the middle of the foul line. Let's see if he stays there to try to get some passes. Pace doing a good job dropping down inside, but there is room to get that ball straight ahead. Ford again with a three-point try. Not what Texas wants. Anthony wants to take 
on the senior, and he pushes off. Well, I don't know because there was no movement from Syracuse, but it looks like Texas set up in a little 2 3 zone of their own. Now, there's one thing that should help Rick Barnes. He has played against this Syracuse zone when he was the coach at Providence. Played 13 games against uh, Syracuse. Mouton and Buckman come back in. That foul on Erskine. It always helps, but it's tough to simulate this defense if you don't play it every day. Way outside, Anthony, yes, sir. Not much that he doesn't have in his arsenal offensively, is there? There is complete. Yes, he is. And like we saw in the first game from seniors Collison and Heinrich, he's been extremely patient. A man from Baltimore. We saw a guy from Baltimore not have a bad final four last year in Juan Dixon. And Tom brings it back out. We've reached the midway point of the first half. See if Ford tries to get that ball with a quick pass right down onto the foul line. Pace realizes what's happening behind him. Ivy steps in, lost the handle, and off Syracuse. Hey, Pace has given some valuable minutes to Syracuse, Jim. That was a nice reach in, and he stole that ball from Ivy, who had an open look. So he comes in, he hits two shots right away, and now playing some solid defense. Open. Buckman underneath. Oh, no, shoot two. Monday on The Late Show, don't miss Chris Elliott. Later in the week, Adam Sandler, Lisa Marie Presley, The Late Show, David Letterman right here on CBS, America's most watched network. Jim, this Texas team is kind of interesting. They have 10 players who play 10 minutes or more per game. Now, James Thomas, who, as you pointed out, only had one foul on him, he has been out a long time in this ball game, and he averages 24 minutes a game. He's down on the far end of the bench right now, has not come back in. Played six minutes all told in his first half. One of two for Buckman. And it and Texas is in a 2-3 zone of their own. So you often hear about a team that presses, doesn't like to be pressed. How about a team that plays a 2-3, doesn't like to play against a 2-3? Is there something to that? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, spinning, traveling. I'm going to change my point. <laughs> <laughs> but there you see. Rick Barnes showing uh, Jim Beheim that I know how to put in a 2-3 as well. But it, it works the first time down the floor. I tell you, it's very difficult, though, to be a zone team part of the time. Most teams that play good zones are teams that really believe in it. That becomes their primary defense. Blue tie. Tack on three more to that last staff. Well, we said he had quick feet, wanted the ball early in this game, and it doesn't stop. He has 18. And there's the 2-3 zone. Anthony. He loves it from that spot. You notice how he squares up so well, Jim, and he fakes off that squared up position. I did not nice. it inside, and Buckman with a three-point opportunity. That's the best attack against the 2-3 zone that we've seen in this game. Buckman put McNeil right on his hip. Terrific pass and feed on the inside, a little triangle against that 2-3 zone. Now Ivy sat down on that pass and really jammed that good low bounce pass in there, made it impossible to steal. Brad Buckman, born on Masters champion Ben Crenshaw's birthday. Now, why is that important? Ben Crenshaw and Brad's father, Brent Buckman, were college roommates at Texas and won national championships. Two of them, didn't they? They did indeed. Yeah. And now let's take a look at this defense. Back to man to man goes Texas. Edelin works his way around for the basket. Edelin is so strong, taking people inside. Ford being patient. Might be looking for a scene. He had it. Mouton with a floater. Buckman active inside. Back to Mouton. Over foot. Fourth comes away with it. He traveled. That shot by Mouton was over fourth, the seven footer. Did this Syracuse team to give you an idea of what they've done in this defense? They have blocked this year 238 shots. 
Now you know Texas is a good shot blocking team. They have 119. Shows you the difference. He traveled on the baseline. Right he moved. Earlier I said he moved on the out of bounds. Did the same thing that time. The official was ready for it. Thomas now back in. Played six minutes, so he comes back in at the eight minute mark. First and out. Syracuse by six. And now Mouton realizing he doesn't want to give nothing out of any room whatsoever for that shot. He is really playing him tight. Underneath, Edelin. Buckman comes in. And the rugged freshman rips the rebound. Nice defense by Anthony. Back to Buckman. Off the glass for two more. Ivy playing solid now. Anthony's got to recognize Ivy, despite the fact that he is a great defender, Anthony has size on him. Take advantage of that. Oh, what a head fake. Anthony in and one. What a head fake by Anthony. You have to play him for the jump shot. We've seen how good it is. And then he makes the head fake. And slices just like we saw Langford in the first game for Kansas between two defenders. Did I did uh, Ford you think not have the position? No, he called for his second. I don't think he was squared up on it. Look at that. Look at how he sliced right through, never caught him squared up. And Ford is going to come out of the game. It's a big foul right there on Ford, Jim. 7.24 to go. And Ross replaces him. Takes away some of that quick movement to beat the zone back down floor with Ford on the bench. Carmelo with another point. 13, he leads the way for Syracuse. Here we see the 2-3 zone lined up, but watch Buckman beautifully set up down on the inside. The ball is rotated, and then the pass goes inside on the perfect bounce pass. Buckman seals the middleman on the 2-3. Excellent execution outside in by Texas. Great Buckman on the bench. Boddicker getting some minutes here. Ford out with the two fouls, Billy. Do you think he sits the rest of the half? I think they're going to have to go with him the rest of the half unless something goes crazy. And here's Thomas getting caught too far under the basket to be a factor on the offensive rebounds. He's got to get himself up a little bit higher. Watch Warwick's footwork here. He's back on the floor with two fouls. Steps that time. Tried to get space. Very good defensive work against him. It's almost like a ballet dancer out there, the way that he moves those feet around. With that lead and the two fouls for Warwick, are you surprised he's back on the floor? Well, you have Blaney who could come back in there for him. Thomas working at it, banks it home. I don't think he wanted to bank that shot, Jim. I think that that one got away from his hands and uh, he'll take it, he's smiling a little bit. But sometimes you have the tuck bounce that goes out for you. Man to man now. It's Ivy on Anthony. See if he pushes him away with those fakes. Nice. With a left-handed bounce pass. McNamara. Oh, oh, what a touch. And he was fouled on the shot as well. No call. Oh, we're going to overrule here. They're going to call it a two. I think the official said they did not see it, and there was no clear indication. They're going to go over to the replay monitor. Step in here. I thought there was a foul on the play. I think, Jim, when he elevated, that his left foot was on the line when he went up in the air, which means it would just be a two. It's where your feet were when you took off, not where you end up. This this one will watch this. See, yep. see his feet, his left, left foot was inside. Now he ended up fading away, so he ended up outside the line oh, after the shot. It's where your feet are when you go in the air. That was a good catch by the crew. Give him a two. Seven point lead, Syracuse. Thomas now, McNeil banging down inside. Luton. Back to the rim, Syracuse with the long board. McNamara, almost didn't see that one coming. Here's Carmelo. 
Just a beautiful catch by Anthony and control in the air. Not much that this young man can't do. Second team All-American player. He was the Eastern Regional MVP. He's always squared up in his shots, plays under control, can explode to the inside. Great hands as well. Almost averaged a double-double this year. Freshman of the year and almost every publication. Well, I'd like to read the publication that didn't have him in that position. Buckman for Boddicker. Just an outstanding talent. Plus, he just continues to smile here. He's not going to let. No, he's not even letting this game wear him down at all. Or, or the gravity of this setup. The final four as a freshman. He's going to enjoy every second of it. Yeah, double doubles, Jim, in 22 games this year. Thomas. Beautiful pass. And Anthony runs it down. Runs it down. Looks like he wants to give it up to his freshman teammate again. McNamara, so they pull it back out. And you can see without Ford in the ball game, there's not that dribble penetration inside this zone. So Syracuse can afford to pull it out a little bit. Ivy inside Buckman. And he's producing the inside points for Texas. Buckman having his best game of the tournament so far. Eight points for the freshman. He had 11 points, four rebounds against Michigan State. Prior to that time, it happened in double figures in this tournament. Ross had an idea to pick that one off. He knew it was on the way. Okay. He's trying to stay right with him. Nice defense. Warwick to the, to the basket, drawing the foul on Texas. Coming up, Singer at the half, Greg Clark. Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo with a complete first half analysis. Plus, we're going to hear from Roy Williams coming up on Singular at the half. Jim, looking at Ivy guarding Colonel Anthony in this first half, he's giving up some size, but he, he says the closest thing that he ever played against uh, like Anthony is Andre Emmett that plays the outstanding player for Texas Tech. Now, in those two games that Emmett played against him, Emmett was 7 for 19 for 20 points and 12 for 21 for 30 points and 11 rebounds, which are pretty big days. Emmett is a fine player, but he's no Carmelo Anthony, so Anthony should keep that pressure on Ivy, even though he was selected Defensive Player of the Year in the, in the Big 12. Granny back in the game for Syracuse. Four twenty to go in the first half. Texas has never led. Ivy now being asked to be the primary ball handler here. Looks like Texas wants to keep it inside and try to battle on the boards. Harris, long range look, and there's that Rick Barnes confidence in the bench. Game after game after game, he goes to any one of ten people. And they produce for him. First pitch points for Texas, though, tonight. The three by Sid Mill Harris. Well, Dwayne, who has been to the Final Four before, only it was his brother that got here from Wisconsin. Right, 2000. Yeah. His brother, Dwayne Dwayne, right. came up to Syracuse, moved in with him here for the last month, wanted to be around during March Madness. Didn't hurt, did it? Great family from Bloomington, Indiana. Oh, look at Buckman Buck now from the outside. McDonald's All-American, Jim. It's not like he didn't come as a heralded recruit to this Rick Barnes program. He's having an excellent first half. Which way is this going? Traveling. No foul. Travel. There's Ivy showing why he is such an outstanding defender, and he has really done a great job in his first half on both ends of the floor. 3-10 to play first half. Billy Packer back here in New Orleans. Syracuse shooting 66%, Billy, and leading by six. Both of these teams shooting extremely well. I think right now it's a matter of T.J. Ford coming back in. Surprise me, Jim, with two fouls that he has. This is really critical for Texas that he not pick up his third in the last three minutes. I'm surprised he's back in here, down just six. Now four. 
That's a pass that's against the 2 3 zone that is available every time down the floor to at least give it a shot. Buckman having a good first half, Jim. Huge first half for Buckman. 12 points. While Ford was out, the team actually gained the point on the Syracuse lead. Dwayne in the lane, too strong, and Buckman again, the man underneath for Texas. Mouton, tough pass. He's trying to find Thomas but McNamara saw it all the way. Point guard to point guard there. McNamara knew the place. Read his eyes beautifully on the play. And the turnover right back, numbers for Texas. Mouton will drive in. And calls in for the long one. Nice no call by the official. Jim Beheim wants a timeout. Terrific comeback by Texas. Texas was down by as many as nine. And they trim it to two with this basket right here. Mouton is the man at the moment with 20 on the Texas side. Hey. Hope you're enjoying the pictures from the Pontiac performance cam and enjoying this second national semifinal with Syracuse leading Texas 44-42. But a little flurry here by the Longhorns. Very good flurry by the Longhorns. Jim, we talked about two teams from the Big 12 in the Final Four this year, the fifth year in a row that that's happened. But one of the things we ought to talk about the Big East, they had a great start to this NCAA tournament. Four teams got selected. They were 8-0 going into the Sweet 16, advanced one team here, and the Big East can be proud. They're the only conference that ever put three teams in the Final Four. They hold clock. off play for a minute. Shot clock at 34, never got started on time. No, the game clock didn't either. But you go back to that uh, that great Final Four. John Thompson, who's with us here today, is an announcer. But Georgetown, St. John's, and Villanova. Everybody assumed that John Thompson would be the champion again, and Raleigh Massimino's team played the perfect game. Upsetting uh, John Thompson, who had a national championship to his name, and obviously brought a team to the Final Four here and had that great game with North Carolina in 82. Nice defense by Texas. A little break there for Syracuse. That ball is just roaming free for a moment. Under two minutes to play in the half. Anthony steps back three. He gets his own. Yeah, he followed it all the way. Surprisingly comes up short with that. And beats Thomas. Who's the foul on Anthony? It is. Anthony did exactly what you said, Jim. A good shooter in balance. He could see that that shot was going to be off and followed it and tracked it right for his own rebound. Unfortunately, he didn't get there in time. All right, here's Brad Buckman for Texas. Having an excellent first half, and again, give Rick Barnes a lot of credit, knowing how to use not only his bench, but his starters, and he gets those combinations. There's that pass that I really think is available, right from the top of the key into somebody flashing to the high post. One and one here for Thomas. Buckman is five for five from the field, and that was the second foul on Anthony. Syracuse so in the lane a little early. Yes, they were, no call. Huh? McNeil stepped into that lane way early. Side push first. There's where Anthony is so smart, realizing they're trying to play him for the jump shot now. Now goes for his power moves inside. He's got the long range jumper. You've seen him move out to 25 feet plus. He's got the short range jumper. He can penetrate. And now he's showing us a post up game. Double bonus. He'll shoot two. Comes right out, starts his career with his first nine games. He scored at least 21 points. Well, in the game that uh, Syracuse lost in the semifinals of the Big East tournament against the tough Connecticut team, he goes 29 points, 15 rebounds. I mean, he puts up huge numbers. And we mentioned Connecticut a couple of times in the Big East tournament against Syracuse. Connecticut actually two for two during the season against Syracuse. Well, Texas beat the Huskies in the Sweet 16 in San Antonio. As Jim Calhoun says, you know, I've had 17 years to watch that 2-3 zone, so I should be ready and prepared for it. And Buckman over the back. One of the few things that mistakes the young man's made all half. That's his second foul. That'll send Warwick to the other side for two. You know, you look at Jim Beheim. With Jim Phelan retiring at the end of the season from Mount St. Mary's, Jim Beheim is now 
longest active tenured coach at one school in Division I basketball in his 27th season. And Jim, when you think that the young guy from Lions, New York, showed up as a walk on at Syracuse, became an outstanding player there, basically his entire life has been wrapped around that university. And we talk about him bringing Syracuse to a third Final Four three and three decades. He actually was a part of a fourth as well as an assistant. Right, 1975, Syracuse went to the Final Four that year, lost both games. That's Dan Ford. 118 to play in half. You know, there was some question about him getting the Syracuse job and Roy Danforth came down to Tulane. He threatened to go to Rochester. What a mistake that have been for both Syracuse and Jim. Wow. Down to Texas. One minute to play. Thomas. Out position. Lost it underneath. It's interesting. He has great hands on rebounding. Doesn't have the hands on finishing. Anthony may be called over the back, and that'll be number three. It is. Huge foul right there. Jim Beheim's got a Yankee now. 46 seconds. Jim can't believe it. That's an important foul. Anthony has got to sit down. Interesting that TJ Ford had come back on the floor with the two, and then Rick Burns said, hold on a minute. Let's, let's put him down for the rest of the half. Well, I'll tell you, though, you don't want to lose either of these All-Americans if you're either one of these coaches because they both bring so much to their team and are critically important for the second half. It'll be a one-and-one one for, for Ivy of Texas. Anthony has not fouled out of a game this year. He's 72 personals on the year. And surprisingly, and you wouldn't think this would ever happen with the great depth that's, that uh, Texas has, but Ford has fouled out of a game this year. To be a little discussion about who should be the free throw shooter here for Texas. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The man that's standing on that foul line right now, Ivy, has had a terrific first half. It's over the back. I don't think that Ivy's the man that would be in a big clots. It's yeah. clots. 21. There, they call him out. They send Ivy away. Well, Ivy's a 77% shooter. Clots is a 61% shooter, so you can't fall Ivy from getting up there. One and one. A good job by the officials. Recognize what you can use that extra screen for. To pick the proper free throw shooter. Kind of quiet for 50,000 people in there. Oh, I tell you, the 60 or whatever. And the game is pretty competitive here all the way. Been a good one here, the second one. Well, I think it wore him out in the first game, not being able to get into things. <laughs> this has the makings of a good one here. Second semifinal with Kansas already securing its place for Monday night's championship game. We got an 11 second differential. Look at Ivy defensively. No matter whether he's guarding a guard or guarding a guy like Anthony, he really gets out on people. Edelin, a very good penetrator. And strong when he gets inside. Spears gives it up to Warren. You cannot execute any better than that. Beautiful job by Eagle. Timeout called by Texas. Texas. Akeem Ward averages two and a half dunks a game. There is nothing subtle about his game. They'll tell you, Syracuse. Thunder dunk, five point lead. Kansas advancing 94 61. Roy Williams. His Jayhawks will go for the championship Monday night. Jim, I realize Evelyn's not a starting player, but he had 26 points against Notre Dame this year, so you see how well he can penetrate. Nice. Ivy driving in. He scores with seven seconds to go in the half. One of the few breakdowns out front in the 2-3 zone is eight seconds to go. Edelin's driving in. Puts it up at the buzzer. Oh, would have counted. Ivy's first points of the half. Bring the Longhorns within three. Jim Beheim talking to McNeil and saying, how is it possible for somebody against the 2 3 Jones zone to drive down the middle like that? All right, Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Jim, you did more penetration, maybe not as much of a concern as you thought, but how do you deal with Brandon Mouton and his outside shooting? Well, I just was worried about four. I was worried about Mouton and Harris, their outside shooters. Those are the guys that really hurt us. 
They're going to score points. So our zone isn't that good. Our offense has been very good, but we're going to have to continue to play well on offense. They're a very difficult team to stop on the defense man. We're going to have to score more points than they do. Carmelo Anthony with three fouls. Do you do you put him on? Do you rest him at all? Make sure he yes. doesn't. He's going to rest right now, Hampton. <laughs> 16 for Anthony for Syracuse, 20 Mouton for Texas. Greg, Gumble, and company coming up in a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinal is sponsored by Sprite, Toyota, Microsoft, and by UPS. Welcome you back to Singular at the Half here inside the Louisiana Superdome, where at halftime, Syracuse is leading Texas, 48-45. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Tom Izzo. Let's look at some numbers from the first half of play. Carmelo Anthony, 16 points, a five out of nine from the floor, six rebounds to go along with it. And Brandon Mouton with a big 20 points on seven of 15 shooting, included four of six from the field goal. Let's talk about Brandon Mouton first. He's the only guy out here from the state of Louisiana. He might as well shine. You know, when we played him, I watched him against UConn. He had 27 points, but he's been even more impressive today. I don't think Syracuse did as good a job as they can. He's got some open shots. They pushed the ball up pretty well, but he's also penetrated and made some shots, and that's been impressive. They've moved the ball very well and always found him. He's been a key so far in the first half. He has been. He's a shooter and a scorer. He showed you that with his ability to make the three and also get inside against the zone. Carmelo Anthony, three personal fouls could be large, Greg, but in the first half, he was terrific. Terrific. Showed you everything in the pantry of his game. Here he is doing it. Watch this rebound in traffic, and now he's going right to the foul line. Excellent body control for the pull-up jump shot. That is a big-time play from a 6'7 freshman, and then out here showing you his range. He's got the full package. He can do everything. The key is, can he play effectively with three fouls in the second half? Right. We've got that one, and we also have Rick Barnes, who yanked T.J. Ford for a good portion of the latter part of the first half because he had two personals. And I thought T.J. did a better job than I thought he would against that zone penetrating. A couple times, tried to take it a little too far. When he penetrated and kicked it out, I thought he was very effective. Well, he found Mouton. He found the hot hand, got the ball to him in rhythm, and he knocked down shots. It's been a game of streaks a little bit so far, and I'd say at halftime, this one's still a little bit too close to call, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I would agree with you, partner. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, in our, our singular fan poll, we asked you what player has had the most outstanding tournament. Here's how you responded. Carmelo Anthony, 36% of you say, yeah, followed by T.J. Ford, who has also shown himself to be a player in the tournament. Nick Collins and Kirk Heinrich. Keep watching for more singular fan poll questions. A reminder, Final Four weekend reaches its crescendo on Monday night at 9 Eastern time with prelude to a championship that's followed by the national championship game. We're looking ahead now to the second half of this game. What do you expect? Which team is going to have to be more aggressive? Well, as you say, it's been a game of runs, but I think Mouton, I don't know if he can continue to shoot like that. Plus, I think Syracuse might clamp down on him a little bit more. I think they'll tag him better, and if Carmelo Anthony can play effectively with three fouls, Syracuse will play Kansas in the championship game on Monday night. You know, we did this in the first game, talking about the main players and up stepped to Keith Langford for Kansas. So is there somebody waiting in the wings that maybe well, Brad we're not Buckman expecting? is doing it for Texas in the first half. He's had a huge first half. I'd, I'd say look for maybe Royale Ivy to be that guy for um, Texas, and on the Syracuse side, I'm thinking it could be Billy Eadlin with his ability to get in the lane and make some tough shots. And McNamara also played yeah, very well, yes, hit did. some big threes early in that half. Yeah, I see you smile big every time some guy hits one from long range. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, we thank you for watching Singular at the Half, either Syracuse or Texas, 20 minutes away from meeting Kansas for the national championship on Monday night. Jim and Billy are back with the second half right after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. All right, Billy Packard has been a physical first half. Syracuse leading at 48-45. Well, slick and quick. T.J. Ford only 5.6 assists. Syracuse has done a fine job, but what's done an even better job is the fact he's in foul trouble. That hurts uh, Texas. The zone busters, a terrific job by Texas in the first half. Six for nine from three-point range. It really got him back in the game. 
board control. Syracuse doing a good job here, even though Texas thought we uh, thought they'd have the advantage. It's even. So Syracuse doing very well there in their zone rebounding. And the freshman sensation has not let anybody down. But Jim, three fouls on Carmelo Anthony, who's five for nine, 16 points, six rebounds. All right, Billy, we'll come back with the second half here in New Orleans in a moment. Yeah, I recognize that guy eating a little gumbo down here in the Big Easy where the Orangemen and the Longhorns are battling in a good one. The second semifinal. It was Warwick with a couple of shots early for Syracuse. Mouton for Texas. Bayheim's team got the advantage. He said, let's go for more. They upped the lead to nine, but Texas has fought back to within three. Those first half stats, both teams shooting at least 50% from the field. There is that good footwork, and Warwick gets himself open on the inside. Very high shooting percentage. Mouton, Jim, and it was obvious right off the bat that he wanted that ball in his hands. Terrific follow through. He's off with 20 points in his first half. Texas really sloppy early, but settled down here in the late stretches. And Mouton, you said he wanted it, he delivered it. 20 to lead the way. Always looking. Against that 2 3 for a seam in the zone. There you see it, Jim, and there you also see ball outside, ball inside, and watch how the pass goes right down the middle of that 2 3 zone. That pass is there anytime you play it, and that time Buckman was able to fill in behind. All right, the Microsoft agile move of the half. There was there was Edelin Jim setting up the play right at the end of the half, and there is Warren skying to flush that one. Yeah, I don't know if it's agile or if it's just pure raw power as Warwick dunks it down. Let's go over to Armin Katayan. Armin? Thanks, Jim. Rick Barnes rather pleased with his team's performance against that Syracuse zone in the first half. Not happy about the way they're taking care of the ball. He said far too many turnovers. And Billy, as you talked about, that third foul on Carmelo Anthony, Rick said we're definitely going after that fourth one early here in the second half. Back to you, Jim. And there's Rick Barnes. He was telling me yesterday that he got a real good look at that Syracuse 2-3 zone back in the 87 Final Four when Syracuse lost to Indiana in the closing seconds, Keith Smart. But he watched him in the Final Four as a young up-and-coming coach looking for his first job. He was in the upper deck here attending the coaches' convention that runs uh, right alongside with the Final Four. He watched from, like, right up here. He watched that 2-3, trying to break it down. Got the George Mason job a few weeks well, later. Got one year there, and then right to the Big East the next year at Providence. On the Clemson, and now the Texas. The Horns... And the Q's battle for the second half of the moment. We welcome you back here to New Orleans. And a reminder tomorrow on CBS 60 Minutes, my big fan Greek Live. The new hit comedy. Ben Becker and the whole nine yards. Bruce Willis, Matthew Perry. Texas to inbounds, start the second half. Anthony will start the second half, Jim, and it is difficult when a team plays the zone the way that Syracuse does to say we're going to attack Anthony. Thomas is over there on the side. Mouton is the guy that's probably try to get in that area of the zone to make Anthony play him. Look at McNamara reach in and almost tie it up. You can't concentrate too long and getting Anthony in trouble with the zone to get you out of, out of the rhythm. Look at how they give Ford the outside shot. That is something he is going to have to work on so he can be a threat. There you go. That's a two. He had a three in the first half. Lead is down to one. Texas has never led, but they are approaching that first time here, having trimmed the nine-point deficit to one. Can you imagine the nightmare will be trying to guard him if he gets an outside oh, shot? Here he goes for the lead, Ford. And he is fouled by McNamara. Is it going to be Dwayne or McNamara that gets that one? It's on McNamara. Is it? Ford really getting off with the steal. Was ready to blister for the second half. And a good job on, on Texas to be able to take P.J., who did not have a great first half, but has two fouls on him. Could be critical to see whether Anthony gets his fourth or Ford gets his third first. What do you think? Well, how about this one? Add this to the mix. The point guard for Syracuse, that's his second. So the point guard's matching 
Two fouls apiece. That ties the game. And there you see TJ's Paris. And one of the things that I really think to show how good a first half Ivy had, although he's not big in numbers, was able to fill in and help. And there you have Jim Texas in the lead. And the Longhorn faithful rise to their feet. Anthony going to work. Beautiful move. And the lead goes right back to Syracuse. And Anthony playing smart right there. Realize he's got that height advantage over Ivy. It takes him inside. He's got to be careful not to pick up the charge. Zone back inside the three-point line. Ooh, good pass. Got it in there. Buckman bounce pass. Tough one. And right through the hands of Thomas. Well, Thomas, Jim, should have been in position to catch that ball. That was a good idea by Buckman. Thomas was, in effect, just watching instead of moving. He'd have had a layup. Warwick. Comes up short, but Anthony, ooh, he was um, dangerously close there to being on the back of Ivy. I'll tell you what, there's not much this young man can't do, though. That was a terrific job. Now, look at what they've done. They put Anthony on the other side of this zone. He was playing down on the right-hand side. Now he's over on the left. A subtle move by Jim Bayheim, figuring the attack was going to come from Mouton on the other side of the floor. Ivy up off the glass. Thomas. No call, back out to Ford. Randy with the long arms keeps Ford from going around him. A good look here at the 2-3, and now that Syracuse defense slides into position. No one there for Mouton, though. Underneath. Going on Texas. It look like Ivy giving up size, having to take Warwick to the floor. They gave it to Thomas. And that's the second on Thomas. Not Ivy. There he is. Thomas not having the game we thought he might have rebounding wise against this zone. It's been caught too far underneath the basket. Boddicker looks like he's getting ready to come in for him. This could be an offensive foul. Look out. That was a hold. I thought it might be a blocking foul on Anthony, but it's going to be a hold on Ivy. Boddicker comes back in. Thomas to the bench. Boddicker, they were talking at halftime up there. Greg and Clark and Coach Izzo about perhaps a player that you would least expect surfacing in that second half. And Boddicker could be a strong candidate. That's off the back of the glass. Here comes Texas. Off the back of the foot. So we have off the back of the glass to off the foot. Mouton steps in, up hand, picked around, Buckman underneath, battling. I think fourth. Got him on a jump ball situation. Arrow, Syracuse. Good, strong play by fourth on the inside. Young man who does not have big stats, but plays the middle of that zone exactly. Gets a, Jim Bayon gets exactly out of him what he wants. Actually only has two points this entire NCAA tournament. A tough guy to match up with. He's got so much more quickness than Boddicker. Has great moves. Three on Boddicker. Go to the official side of NCAA Sports to get complete NCAA basketball championship coverage. Video highlights to the latest news from the Final Four. All at NCAA Sports.com. Thomas just a brief rest. Boddicker back to the bench with the three. Syracuse to inbound, leading by three. It's three minutes, second half. They tried the lob the last time, and they tried to get it done. Work, and he can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Again, you are out of bounds if you're Duaney. Even if you jump inbounds, the last place you left was out of bounds, so the ball goes over to Texas. He's tried that lob, Jim, and he's telegraphing that lob pass. And Mouton really forced that turnover by blocking the. Tempted inbounds. Here's Ford. Jumper, yes. Early signs of a strong second hand for TJ. Ford, he has 11 6 in his hand. And after that lecture, Thomas back in the ball game for Texas right away. So they want to get him on the boards. Anthony over to Warwick. Blocked by Buckman. He led the Longhorns in that category this year. Ford lost the handle. That was last touch by Syracuse. 
The one who touched it did a good job getting back on defense. You see Buckman, who is having a stellar game here, both ends of the floor, was really the difference in the first half when Texas really needed somebody to step up. Buckman inbounds back to four. The Texas trailing by just a point. Jim, we've seen Texas players all over the country now. Their high school basketball in Texas really starting to pick up. So fertile territory for Rick Barnes to keep this program rolling. There's Buckman again inside. He hasn't missed all night. That's six for six and the lead back to Texas. Now what I think we're going to have a little conversation here. He sees it. Is there some blood on the arm? No, they were looking for it. Buckman, I think, is just that the blood is flowing so well in his body that he's getting red, but not from blood. He is fired up out there and doing a great job for Texas. The Longhorns regain the lead. Newton and Ivy not giving McNamara any room for there. He got the jump shot on the switch. Four on an eighth, and Thomas came over, tipped it out. Now, fourth for his size averages almost four rebounds a game. Now, you figure how often he's making penetrating and passing moves. Where does he find time to get four rebounds a game? That's part of the complete package. Hold on, Ivy. You know, Ford was the most outstanding player in the regional last week, and he hit seven out of 27 from the field. Yep. Buckman with 14 is just one short of tying a career high. Been a good one here. Now the Pontiac Performance Cam, this uh, unique view, floor of the Final Four, and during that break we had the tearing down of the nets. It's getting a little misty-eyed here, Billy. <laughs> then I realized, hold on a minute, a little advance <laughs> a play here. They changed the nets down at the end of the Texas end of the floor. Those clots had a good step out. Right through the hands of Syracuse and the turnover. That was a terrific play by Anthony, even though the pass was not caught. He really understands how to play the game for a young man. Kept that dribble alive rather than picking it up on the step out. And should have had a teammate get a good catch and put something away. Oh, are you kidding me? Ford gave it up outside. Ford had an open layup. He didn't realize how open he was inside with all those Syracuse shot blockers. Could have laid it right in. With a double up on Anthony. And the reason that they can do that is because they don't have to worry about Ford shooting at all. Italy. Snags that one. Now, fourth has got to realize he's not being guarded, and so consequently, he should be going for all kinds of offensive rebounds with nobody there to block him out. Here you see again that pass against the 2 3 right down in the middle. The fourth, unlike Buckman, can't make a play. Throw it in there, you hope to throw it right back out rather quickly. Yeah, or turn and face. And a tie up Ivy and fourth arrow right back to Texas. Jim, when you have a player that's not being guarded, as is in the case of fourth right now, he has got to recognize that right away and realize he can immediately on any shot blast to the basket and get a putback. He's standing and watching instead. 13 on the shot clock for Texas. Newton silent this second half. There's Ford, steps in, that's a two. Plots battles, but Warwick's there for the rebound. Team Warwick's had a nice game here for the Orange. I look at Mouton, understanding McNair, where he is, and making sure he doesn't get any open looks. Anthony gets that one to go. That's a three. Lead back to the cube. And even with Ivy on him, Anthony just stares you down and never utilizes his dribble until he has to. And that's why a defender has such a hard time handling him outside. The freshman with 23. He has been well schooled. There's Mouton driving in. Wrap around pass. Thomas inside for two. First time today that Thomas has been in position to catch that ball and finish. There's a triple team headed up. 
Finds an open man, Edelman, right back over, Warwick, fade away. Tipped up and in by Anthony. And he had T.J. Ford on his hip. No consequence against the bigger man. Ford spins out. Jim Ford gets that over a seven-footer. Here we see Anthony. Nice step back move by Warwick. And then Anthony with Ford trying to block him out just goes right over the top. Two shots. Two shots for TJ Ford. Anthony in the second half. All the points for the Syracuse side in this half. All eight. Ford again, as I said, an excellent free throw shooter, shooting 82% on the year. And Jim, you talked about the fact that he was not shoot, shooting well from the outside in the NCAA tournament, but he has done a fine job from the foul line. He was 11 for 13 from the foul line, 10 assists against Michigan State. You haven't seen many guys win the most outstanding player of the regional, though, shooting from the floor like he had. Yeah, like 20, a little better than 25%. Yeah. But he beats you in so many ways. Absolutely. Anthony down one. Oh, outside, Texas. Whistle for that one. And Anthony doing a terrific job not picking up any fouls. Everybody from Texas saying he's using the hook move, including Rick Barnes, but he has it down to a science. He's still got that smile on his face. Mouton with his second. And by the back of the shirt, they say, is that T.J. Ford, his third. Wow, that's a cheap foul for T.J. to pick up. Oh, you're not kidding. Edelman's not going to do anything with the ball down in there. That's a huge foul. Not bounding again. Out of bounds plays have given the Texas some trouble today. They play out of bounds in a man-to-man. -man. Here it is, not using that dribble. Pace back in the game for Syracuse. Had a good appearance in that first half. And a hold against the Longhorns. You know, you get the feeling that Anthony says, there's nobody out here that can guard me. Now you see T.J. Ford grabbing Edelin's jersey when he got beat on the screen. That was a very cheap foul. Right now, I think Syracuse would be wise to go to Anthony because he's got the Syracuse players thinking, and he doesn't believe anybody can stop him. That was on Mouton. He has three, and we're already in a one-on-one uh, -one situation on this side. Anthony to the line. As I said, Jim, this young man had his first nine games in Syracuse. Every game he scored over 20 points. You talk about coming out of the box. Terrific opening game, 27 points, 11 rebounds against Memphis in a loss in the Garden. But uh, this young guy has never slowed down. That game against Memphis was the first college basketball game of the season in the nation. And Syracuse trying to find a way to get to the last game of the season if they can win here and then take on Kansas Monday night. It's an important possession for Texas. Ball squirt free and Thomas with the basket. If you're Syracuse now with Thomas having three fouls, every time he penetrates, you shouldn't worry about anything other than drawing the charge. Stop trying to play him defensively. Look to try to force that fourth foul. Anthony has three fouls on the Syracuse side. Ford with three, Mouton with three for Texas. And Potiker as well. Pace who came in and Helps Syracuse in that first half with two quick baskets. Let's see if he goes for another one. Similar to the shots he made in the first half. Tipped out. Chased down by T.J. Ford. Mouton. Yes. Uh, falling, failing on the part of Warwick. Mouton who's having a tremendous game from the outside. Why would Warwick give up on him defensively? Not a good play. His first basket of the second half. He has 23 for the game. And a timeout called by Syracuse. The next whistle would have been the under-12 timeout, but Beheim didn't want to wait for it. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, great to have a Final Four back in New Orleans. Again, what a special sight this is for this event. Anthony has all 11 points for Syracuse in this half. And Jim, I think Syracuse should continue to go to him because Anthony feels he can score against anybody. And what he's now starting to do is to draw double and triple teams so other members of his team will be open. I'd get him the ball and force Texas to keep trying to double and triple team him. 
He's not a selfish player. He'll give it up, and that'll make Warwick, Neal, maybe even McNamara, who has not had a look in a long time, get open. Klotz is called for that one, and they said it was not in the act of shooting. So a one and one. Now they're going to switch it back over. They had a little meeting there, the shoot button was, and yes, they're going to shoot two here. Three Longhorns with three, Anthony with three, all in the first half. Syracuse has committed only two in this half. Well, and what it is is Anthony putting so much pressure on the Texas defense. And the, and the reason he's able to do that is you've got to respect his outside shot, and he does not put the ball on the floor until he has to. One and two there for Warwick. 61's on the board here. We were talking about team fouls, Billy. Two committed by Syracuse, eight by Texas, second half. Well, this has all been because of Carmelo Anthony. He is forcing the Texas team to concentrate so much on him in double and triple teams, and they have been picking up fouls just trying to stop him. If you if you know as a defender that you're going to get double team help, you shouldn't be getting any of those reach fouls. And here's the 2-3. Syracuse not have, have not had to get out of it this entire ball game. Continue to look around for a seam, trying to crack that sliding 2 3 zone of Syracuse. Mouton stepping in. Ivy baseline, way too strong. And last touch, lead by, well, we're going to set off to Texas. That was no foul. They're going to call a foul in Texas, though. Wow, it continues to pile up. That one was one I didn't see, Jim. And neither did Rick Barnes. Call them Buckman. The Hickory native, young man who stared down Dean Smith one time at Chapel Hill and got himself a lot of support at Clemson. What a competitor. Yeah, he said, you coach your team and I'll coach mine. <laughs> Welcome to the ACC. One and one pace. And he was a real rookie then going up against the all-time winningest coach in the history of the game. Buckman with that foul. That's three on the freshman. Yeah, it's really piling up now in Syracuse, which over the years, as people have always said, not a good free throw shooting program. This year shooting 69%. They're now what, 14 for 18, something like that? Yep, right on. Two for two for Pace. Well, he used all the rim. That ball actually hit underneath and went up over the top. Line drive, yeah, it just climbed up and over the rim. Now, Mouton was open before for his jump shot on the swing, but for some reason he wanted to penetrate. There's the screen. They're trying to get the ball to Mouton, but Warwick recognizes what's happening and steps up from the wing. Seven on the shot clock. Penetration coming here by Ford. Now try to draw the charge. Two seconds on the shot clock. Ford has to put it up in time. Rebound, Anthony. Not a good possession by Texas. Outside, McNamara open three. Oh, he's been waiting for a long time to get an open look. He was squared up, the feet were set, and they was ready to go, and he delivered it. Terrific job by Syracuse in that last defensive possession. Texas calls a timeout. It is getting a mellow here in the Big Easy. Syracuse by five. Still looking for a better grade of basketball? Just go to planters.com and you can win tickets to next year's Final Four in San Antonio. Go nuts at the Final Four. With its big win earlier today here, 94-61. With Syracuse, touched on this earlier. Syracuse advance to the final and set up a most unusual scenario. Having already beaten Oklahoma State, Oklahoma playing a Big 12 team today, Texas, and then another Big 12 team in the final. That's a possibility on that side. You know, something else, Jim, if that would be the case, you have two fellows that have been premier coaches for a long period of time that have never won the big one. And so one of them certainly would accomplish that on Monday night for that elusive first championship. Well, Texas set up a rematch of what many considered to be the best regular season game this year. 
They met the day after the Super Bowl in Lawrence, Kansas, and Texas had a great battle. Look at Anthony. He's moving in on career-high numbers. You can see the pressure that he has put on Texas in this second half. Every time he touches the ball, all five Texas players are aware of it, and in many cases, he's been double-teamed, so that's given Syracuse some open looks. Monaker rattles home one. That whistle was on McNeil, his second. And Jimmy, talk about that uh, Texas-Kansas game. You have to say the finest individual performance of any player this year, Nick Collison, in that ball game. Regular season. Regular I think season. maybe his, his performance against Duke in the turn close. Pretty close. 33 and 19. He had. Ball gets away from Pace. Able to save it. McNamara again, all set. Not this time. Didn't quite have the handle. <laughs> And Warwick, everybody have a oh, What a dunk! They're going to call a charge. Ivy was anchored underneath. What a dunk! Everyone had their back turned. And look at Ivy underneath. Oh. They're going to count the basket and call the foul uh, on Warwick. There should have been a basket and no foul on that play whatsoever. I don't think the officials gave Warwick credit for how far away from the basket he was when he took off. That should have been a no call after the dunk. That's his third foul. Basket counts. Final 10 minutes. Game two in New Orleans. Moore just got to recognize he needs to get inside this zone with penetration. They're taking too much time on the clock. Buckman doubled up. Maybe too long. Push off on Syracuse. Big break. Call to McNeil. McNeil had no reason to file Buckman there, Jim. They had him double team. He had no place to go. Buckman's got to understand when that ball comes in, either do something with it or kick it right out for a jump shot. Texas will inbound only the fifth team foul. No one and one. New 35, obviously. Bounce pass trying to go into Buckman. McNamara. Thomas, nice job on the floor. Right back to him, turn around, too strong, second chance. That's what we expected to see from Thomas in this game, offensive rebounding, and what happened to him early in the ball game in the 2-3 zone, he was finding himself too far underneath the basket, never in position to get any rebounds. That was on pace Sunday, 60 minutes. Ed Bradley was the score. On Rax, neighbor, Jordan. It's tomorrow night. 60 minutes. And we're talking about the nation's sixth leading rebounder. Average the double double this year in the toughest conference in the nation. It's pretty remarkable these days. Yep. You just don't see that. They had another player in that league, too. Baylor's Lawrence Roberts, who averaged a double double. Missed two from the line tonight. 0 for 2. Short. Buckman, though, there to retrieve it. Oh, good week. Recovery by Anthony, and that's going to be McNeil trying to keep Thomas out of position. And now it looks like things are evening up a little bit foul-wise. And that's four on McNeil, and that is team foul seven. So back to the line, Thomas, for one and one, and he's 0 for three tonight. Well, at one point, Syracuse was getting in the double, and there were only two fouls in the situation for Texas. So now it's starting to even up a little bit. Fourth comes in for McNeil. Two mistakes by McNeil now. Remember on the double team where he pushed Buckman and then there's that foul on Thomas. 67% on the season. Struggle at the line tonight. Good stroke with that one. Well, Buckman can be credited with those strong rebounds inside. Freshman has had an outstanding game for Texas. Foul situation evening out. From Schenectady, New York, James Thomas. Short again. And Anthony secures it. Jim Beheim said that people asked him, did he ever try to recruit Thomas? He said they did, but he did not want any cold weather. Calls himself in Texas. Coming down, Mara delivers a beautiful jumper. Well, we've talked about Anthony a lot, but not more as a guy that loves to come up big when the games get tight. Calling the mayor of Sprint. Starting to get a little working margin now with Syracuse. 
Texas with a dry spell from the field. Texas may have to come back in with some outside shooting, Jim. Ford had an open jumper. Again, Buckman with an offensive rebound. Spin move taken away, McNamara. No place to go in that zone. Beautiful pass. Pace for McNamara. Timeout, Texas. They've got to get another shooter in the game. No timeout. I think they should be taking a timeout here and get a bottle in the game. They need another shooter. Barney Harris on his bench. He's going to bring Sid Mill in. Yep. Ford. Inside Thomas. Beautiful assist. TJ Ford to Thomas. Did the Syracuse players think that Ford wasn't going to be looking for a helping man there? They had played him as if he was a postman. It's nine assists. The man who led the nation a year ago in that category is a freshman. Warwick in the lane. And Buckman got a hand on him. I'll tell you, does Warwick play like a seven-footer or not? I mean, well, that he's catch, way up there oh, above that rim. That, the catch, that catch that he made was way up there. I know he's listed 6'9", but he plays so long. Watch this catch, and then he goes over everybody. Buckman's six foot nine. He played over him by six inches. Four on Buckman. Two shots at the line for War. Boddicker back in for Buckman. Has to sit with the four. And Sid Mill Harris. They haven't seen production from the outside from him today. No, but I think this is what uh, Rick Barnes uh, recognized. He has got to get another outside shooter, and with Boddicker and Harris in there, he actually brought in two outside shooters. Got the under eight timeout. They call him Little Ricky from Hickory. Hickory, North Carolina. His first final four. His horns are down nine. hoping to do something I've never heard of before. Two visits to the Oval Office in the same season. <laughs> Back in December, they're playing up in the Washington area. They had a wonderful visit. They told us all about it with President Bush in the Oval Office. He went back in his days as the governor of the state of Texas, used to work out there in the Texas workout room and attend uh, Longhorn basketball games on a number of occasions. Jim, what we're going to see right now, I think, is the ball going with penetration and kickouts. And it's going to be T.J. Ford's job to get inside the 2-3 zone. They've got it surrounded now. Harris, Mouton, and Boddicker. And then let Thomas go rebound. It's not time to panic if you're Texas. But I think that should be the game plan the rest of the way offensively. T.J. Ford on penetration, then kick out to the three three-point shooters. And it's a big one-and-one one right here for Thomas. Texas and Thomas struggling at the line. Beautiful stroke there. 13 of 21, the team right now. That was the most positive foul shot that he's taken in this half. Well, you see what Mouton tried to sneak around Warren, almost pulled it off. He had his arm right over the top of Warwick and almost snuck inside. Working margin of eight. Look how long Anthony freezes the defender without using the dribble. Two he has eight. that down to a science. Two point basket, 29 on the game. Ford could not give the ball up so easily. He's got to penetrate and kick. That's the largest lead of the game for Syracuse outside. Slides off the rim. Boddicker driving in. It's going away, McNamara. But the third time today, McNamara's come from the outside to steal it. Anthony with a new career high 31. Boy, you've got to love the way this young man plays. Timeout, Texas. He shows he can finish. He's been so intelligent the way he's played today. Outside and in. Well, for young players, watch a great young player. He realizes he can freeze the defense, never uses the dribble, and therefore he's got all the pump fakes, good footwork, always squared up. Terrific job by a guy who's having a career game at the big time. Ooh, just a monster game, 31 points, 12 rebounds. Buckman hit from behind by fourth. It sounded pretty clean. And not a bad foul, though, because Buckman had an easy layup. Third on fourth. 
This is a huge foul. What's called number 51? Right before the CBS Sports Line stat of the game, the stat line by Carmelo Anthony. And you can get complete tournament stats at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. And Jim, how efficient has his game been? And remember, we thought he could have some foul trouble and never got in foul trouble, even though Texas said they were going to go at him the start of this second half. How about this? In this half, he has not missed. Six for six from the field in this half. Well, he's taking a page out of Villanova. Playing the perfect second half. And it wasn't such a bad first half. No. Harris. Battles out. Bonnet for big board. Keeps it alive. Texas down 12. Inside. Mouton. That is what Texas has got to do. Inside out. Looking for some threes. Still plenty of time in the game. Down 10. To six minutes. A long time. Mouton 25 points. Five in the second half at 20 at the intermission. You know, the, e the, the offense can start by just giving the ball to Anthony. Texas is so worried about him. Look at him way out here. He's running it down now, under 10 on the shot clock. A little early for this, don't you think? It's the first time we've seen it. Anthony started it. Now we'll try to end the possession. Comes up short, first miss of the half. Jim, in the shot clock violation. And Jim Bayheim Be has a quizzical look on his face as to what was that possession all about. I could give Texas some confidence. A three here would make this game very interesting. Bhutan for the two. And right underneath with it is Pace. Nice performance off the bench by Pace. Jim Behind telling his team just to calm down a little bit. Anthony from behind Boddicker, and that's rejected Buckman. That'll be it for Buckman. They're going to call him for the foul. That's going to bring Thomas back in. Tough break for Texas. Buckman's had a solid game. Jerry McNamara, as always, his play a little bit overshadowed by the other freshmen, but it has been such a stellar show here by the freshman point guard. Well, he's all Big East freshman player. Certainly to be one of Syracuse's best all-time if he keeps it up. 15 points for McNamara. There goes Brad Buckman. Very fine effort here. Six for six from the field. Buckman's 14 four points, four seven four rebounds. Rebounds. You know, McMenard, Jim, uh, we said he wasn't that heavily recruited, but he's the seventh all-time leading scorer in Pennsylvania high school basketball history. And where are you on that list? No, way down the okay. line. <laughs> way down the line. Didn't play all our games indoors back in those days. Right outside, huh? That's right. Royale Ivy comes back for Texas. 11-point game, 5-13 to go. So hard to try to find an open shot against the Syracuse 2-3. And, and I really think Tom is taking too much time. Just penetrate and kick. And Ivy will head to the line for a couple. Pace. Well, you don't want to take any time if you're Texas whatsoever. Getting the ball in position to score. This ball was called over by Josh Pace. Thursday on CBS, CSI. 9, 8 central here on America's Most Watched Network. Ivy with really good form, but that outside shot, the threes tonight. Well, I've been Mouton, it really hasn't been there for Texas. Ford hit one. Right, Ivy is uh, interesting. But he shoots 77% from the foul line, but uh, he's only 27% from three, so would rather go inside than take that shot. It's got to be Boddicker or Mouton on the floor right now looking for threes. Syracuse spreading things out. Looking to delay this game a little bit. A lot of time on the clock. That was a hold by Ford. He didn't get called. And Beheim wanting to run off clock here. It's a little early. Ivy, well done with the reach in. Mouton on the drive. That's got to be goaltend. They don't call. 
Warwick got by with one there. Came across the lane. Mouton goes up. Let's take a look. Wow, I think that was awful close. But if you're not exactly sure, you're not supposed to call it. Looked like it was on the way down the mat. Same here. Boddicker will go to the line for a pair. Yeah, I thought that was goaltending. You'll see Mouton who double clutched it. If anything, Jim, it was right at the peak. And we talked about how long Warwick is, and he got up there on that one. Fourth foul on Craig Forth, two shots by two. Texas trying to chip away here. This Texas 23, Billy. Texas team is 73% free throw shooting team. They do have an advantage over Syracuse in that regard. Nice strokes by Bodica. Seven point game. I think Syracuse needs to get back to their offense. And here Texas for the first time goes in a half court trap. Trying to speed things up a little bit. But I think that they can go ahead and play with this clock. Underneath fourth. Thomas got him with the body. No, Pace is making some good decisions out there. Fourth who's not being guarded because Thomas figures he's not going to try to get in the offense. Got himself out of position. Not a bad foul when you consider this is a 52% shooter at the line. And he was right there for the layup. A little, a little suggestion from Dwayne on the Syracuse bench. It might be time for Dwayne to get back in this game with his experience. You like those seniors on the floor. One of two by four. A lot of time, a lot of time here. Ford's taken up to do not much. And Bonacher, three point shot. Ooh, yes. Baby. Without dribble penetration, Bonacher right over pace. 12 point lead is down to five. And Texas picking up the pace, and I really think that Syracuse kind of took that air out a little early. A little 9 2 run here by the Longhorns. Right back to New Orleans. Party dips. Julie Beheim got married back in 97. Syracuse here with the five point lead and possession. Double bonus on each side. And Texas pick it up in defensive intensity. And where that ball should go to this young man right here and get back into offensive mode. Being guarded by Ivy. McNamara working it back over to the Anthony side. Ford hit the floor, no call. Five second shot clock. Pace, one hander. Mouton, I couldn't remember the scouting report, Jim. A left hander all the way. Monica waits. Three. Dipped up Thomas. Over the back. And call it on Warren. Boy, both going up with two hands on the ball, but Thomas had inside position. That's four on Warren. This is Thomas, who has been short on a number of free throws tonight. That's that dilemma. You're kind of looking up past the backboard at yourself at the giant screen, and you know, it could be a bit of a distraction. He has been short on his shot, so Jimmy's pulling the string. Is not the good follow through on the release. On the release, I think it's more. It's more his case than it is the screen that's in the way that's flickering on and off up there, as you can see it. But I really think that if Thomas will follow through and stay with the shot, he'll be all right. I was better. There's a 2.59 left. 82.76. Syracuse. July 2nd. 
Just a shade under three minutes to play. The strategy the rest of the way here, Billy. Jim, very important defensive possession right here uh, for the simple reason that you, you have a two-possession game, six points. And so if you're Texas, this is really critical. I think that Rick Barnes has done a fine job with Mouton and Boddicker in the game, thinking about the opportunity to penetrate and get some kickouts for three. You don't want to foul if you're Mouton. Stay away from Anthony. Now there's the matchup. Mouton on Anthony down inside. McNamara penetrating. Looking back outside. Thought we might see Eaglin in the game right now to have two primary ball handlers. Pace in there though, and he has given them big minutes. Eight on the shot clock. Nice. Anthony working it over to Warwick for the two. You can see the pressure Anthony put on the double team defense. Warwick just held his ground. Four got it over to Thomas. Bounces out the back to the line. Is that fourth, uh, fifth? I believe it is. There you can see where the double team comes. Warwick held his ground and an excellent pass by Anthony. I think that's, is that fourth, fifth foul? I think yes. it is. Yep. And Jimmy Beheim, knowing he's got time to get a sub in, talks to his team. So he basically gets a free time out here. You figure they come back with Dwayne or McNeil. McNeil has four fouls on him, but Jim may want to go to a little smaller team. So this is a free timeout for Bayheim. A very clever move on his part. <laughs> you know what's interesting? If TJ Ford was right in the middle yeah. of that huddle over there. Well, and, and probably rightfully can be there because it's not a timeout. Jim Bayheim was just using the time he had to get a sub in there. Good move by the veteran coach. Now, will Thomas get those fouls? to follow through on this shot. Very critical here. That's what you wanted right yep. there. There's the follow through. He was pinching them earlier. Rick Barnes going to his bench right now, so you know what he's going to do. He's going to be pressing full court. Two big ones by Thomas. Watch this. He's going to be pressing full court. He's putting as the, the quick a team as he can have on the floor. What we're going to see now, we're going to see substitutions by Barnes. Offense to defense. Reginald Erskine coming in for the Longhorns. He's got his pressing team on the floor. Wow, how about this matchup? Two All-Americans. Well, that's done. That won't stand. And Ford saying, somebody get him. He's not my man. Freshman of the year last year versus this year's freshman of the year. Now, there's a nice move by Beheim too. Bring in Edelin, so he's got two ball handlers on the floor. Under two minutes to play. Six-point lead Syracuse. Edelin with under 10 on the shot clock. Quick move, Anthony, then steps back. And a rebound over to Mouton. Texas had to have a stop, they got it. Mouton in the other end. Not oh, this he way off. Erskine's inside, misses the chippy. Huge miss, Jim. Anthony securing the rebound. Erskine wide open, that was a huge miss. Would have brought it to four. 120 left. Edelin driving in. That's going to be on Boddicker. Don't know why Boddicker went for the foul there if he'd held his ground. We'll see this miss. Erskine has it. It's right in his hands. He's right there. How does he miss this shot? It was surprising, though, how far offline Mouton's three was. Yes. He has shot it so well here, and he was open and set. Uh, Mouton, as we said in that first half with 20 points, he was four for five from three, and that one wasn't even close. Two shots for Edelin. 68%. Ooh, and that one had a knuckleball look to it. Texas young man played at the Matha High School, and as we know, was suspended for 12 games this year. Outside play. McNeil comes back. He has four. Sid Mill Harris, who can shoot from the outside, is in for Texas. Going for Syracuse underneath. One of two for Evelyn. Seven-point game. Ford, you want to push this ball right through the middle of that zone and get shots up as quickly as possible. Boddicker, yes, over Warwick. 
Jim. He said that he could be a candidate. One of the supporting players to rise at the end. And a minute six left. Moniker, all nine of his points in this half. One timeout remaining here for Texas. Jim, the last two times Jim Beheim had teams that could advance to a championship game. He had relatively easy games, a 77-63 win over Providence and a 77-69 win over Mississippi State. This one much tighter. He can run the baseline, Anthony looking. Ivy pushes McNamara out of bounds. I'll send him the other end with two. And the last guy you'd want to foul is the young man who led the Big East in free throw shooting, McNamara. This year didn't do anything other than make 86 and 95 fouls. So you do not want to foul this young man. You know what he did in league play this year at the line? 53 of 55. He had two streaks during the season of 30 consecutive made free throws. For two for Matt the middle. Right on the money. Been out for just a moment. He's hit some big shots here in the late going. Now, Jim, that record you're talking about in the Big East uh, is a new Big East free throw shooting record. Yep. When you do substitute offense to defense, you can't go ahead and let a guy in and out. So Boddicker will have to go back out and be standing on the sideline here after the free throw is made. No, nope. so that could get him back in quickly. Let's see if Rick Barnes sends him right back to the scorer's table. That means McNeil has to sit as well. No time had come off the clock because of the foul before the inbounds pass. McNamara being pushed. One more here for the freshman sharp shooter. Ooh, he leaned back. Yes. That didn't look like any 90% free throw shooter. He looked a little unsteady, but he got a bow. 87-81. A minute to play. Harris. What that one rattles out. out. Anthony for the rebound. Four fouls the wrong man. Absolutely. If you're going to foul somebody right away like that, you might as well get Anthony on the rebound. You don't want to put that 90% free throw shooter on the line again. Syracuse in pretty good shape. How about that comment, Jim, by about Jim Beheim? And they said, Did you like New Orleans? He said, In 1987, I liked them for five days, 39 minutes, and 56 seconds. That's right. So he's getting a little bit more pleasure here this evening. Back at the carrier dome. The orange. You think they'd be cheering if it were the old colors, uh, rose, pink, and pea green? I think it. I don't know if they'd be cheering as much. Monaker waits. Hits nice. the three. He's doing everything that Rick Barnes could have asked off that bench. Hold that celebration up in Syracuse. 48 seconds. Plenty of time. 89-84. Orangeman in front. Longhorns have exhausted all their timeouts, Billy. Jim, what you want to do right now is to double team McManour so he can't touch the ball, and then find, well, they don't do it, and they're going to have to foul the guy they don't want to put on the line. And you can see what they didn't do. Right now, double team McManour, make the ball go to Edlin, and then foul him immediately. Don't even guard Edlin, because McManour is the guy who wants the ball here. Ross has come in to try to Force a steal. A lot of pressure on that. Gets it back to Anthony. Looked like he may have taken a step after receiving that. Anyway, he may have hurt himself there too, Jim, because he was going to dunk and didn't realize how far away he was. Three point shot, front of the rim, chase down. All game. Edelman goes in for two more. I'll tell you, I don't know if Anthony, he's grimacing down his other end, thinking about Monday night. He just kind of got off balance on that uh, drive. Texas was trying to foul Warwick. Next thing you know, the pass got free. Anthony with the dunk that really ended it. Well, it had to be an aggressive foul. Or the basket that ended it. Ivy in and out. And there's Warwick down at the other end pace. We're going to have 
Monday night, two coaches who've long sought that first championship battling here for the title. Jimmy Beheim walking down that sidelines, breathing relief. The game goes to Syracuse, 95-84. Jim Beheim, Roy Williams, Monday night. Both deserving, Jim, after all of these years. It's been like a Big 12 tournament, this NCAA tournament for Syracuse, having now taken out Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Texas. They got one more Big 12 team to play Monday. And for a warm-up, they took out Missouri in regular <laughs> season, so they're going for the Big 12 championship. Kansas and Syracuse, your championship matchup here in New Orleans. Carmelo Anthony. We're going to talk to the freshman. He's making his way over. Find out if he may have turned an ankle at the end of that game. An 11 point win for the Orangemen. Anthony, 33 points, career high, 14 rebounds. It's Syracuse, Kansas in the championship game Monday.